Flock, and welcome back to Black Phoenix Entertainment. We're going to start this one in the office because the trusty GoPros failed me on the uh, first half of this vlog. I did do it on the Riker, but the second half is going to be on the bike with the helmet cam. So, talking about turbos on Rikers, and I figured um, I'd make an entire vlog about this because, I don't know, for some reason <laughs> it rubs a certain um, part of the Can-Am community the wrong way. I don't know why, it just, it bugs the crap out of them, and basically you got these guys saying, oh, you don't need them, you don't need them, blah, 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 blah. Who cares, we don't need a lot of things, but what we do need on the Riker is boost and turbos, and there's a good segment of us that have been asking for that for a while, and Can-Am does have them. They have, literally have the, and I've talked about it a lot, the 900 Ace Turbo and the 900 Ace Turbo R. Those are two stock turbo motors that Can-Am has. Um, they'll throw them in the snowmobiles, throw them in the jet skis. For some reason, they will not throw them in the Can-Am Rikers. Not sure why at this point. Whatever. But, um, yeah. And there's also an aftermarket turbo out there as well that will bolt on to the 900s from uh, Silver Turbos. Uh, let's just um, talk about that for a second. So, the stock 600 makes, about, I believe, 60 horsepower and 40 pounds of torque. The stock 900 makes 80 horsepower and around 60 pounds of torque. The Silver Turbo is saying that you will get about 115 to 120 horsepower, give or take, with just their basic setup. That's not bad. That is not a bad number at all. Especially when you put in um, the 900 Turbo from Rotex is about 140 horsepower stock and the Turbo R is 180. That's the monster. That is the monster mode of the Turbo R. So, why, again, do we want a, a, a turbo? Why is it so controversial? What do you mean we don't know controversial? Yeah, it's controversial because these, again, these guys on these forums are just keep bashing those of us who want more power, want a little bit more performance. Um, I'm going to show you a short clip from a guy who's in, just installed the silver turbo, um, and <laughs> we'll let you guys decide. <laughs> Yeah, so that was a burnout. I don't know, I'm bad at judging distance, but probably could have gone for an eighth of a mile at that point. But yeah, it'll just spin all day long, drifting, all that stuff, and you'll just get up to speed and go. You'll have the power when you need it. So but, so there's that, but there's also, um, what do you do to the Riker? once you get boost. And that's part of um, what people were talking about. They're basically saying, oh, the Riker can't handle it. You'll blow the tires off of it, you know, all that stuff. I'm not disagreeing with some of these, but let's talk about what you would need to do to your Riker if you're adding more boost to it, more power, anything like that. So now let's get to the actual vlog on the helmet camera. All right, so you got your Riker. What are we gonna do if we get a turbo motor or we slap a big turbo and uh, put some boost on this thing? Um, let's talk about suspension first. I got the adjustable Fox Sport suspension. In my opinion, I think the Fox suspension is gonna be fine. I could be wrong on that, but I'm just judging by how I ride and how I've situations I've run into should be okay. I, I don't see an issue. If you've got the base suspension, that might become an issue because it's not um, not built the same. The specs aren't the same. The spring rates and all that stuff. So you might have a little bit of an issue with that. Um, any, and any of these things that I say, you guys can comment down below. You know, do all the fun YouTube stuff now, the liking and subscribing, all that cool stuff, and see all the stuff in my description from BLR Tuning and Ironside Customs. And, of course, trying to save the kittens from Moby Kit Rescue. That's all down in my description. You can check that out. If you think I'm wrong or you just want to make comments on anything that I'm saying here, feel free, and then we can have a cool discussion about it. So that's basically suspension. I think that the sway bar is fine. I mean, we're talking about going in a straight line. We're not talking about taking, you know, taking this to the track, taking turns at 80, 90 miles an hour. The one, two big things <laughs> that um, I would definitely change out, these <laughs> Kenda tires need to be changed out. Now, definitely the rear tire, which is easier because there are car tires in this size. So you could change this out to a nice Toyo or a Nitto or some sort of drag radial, which that much power, I would suggest that. 
um, if you do touring or rain riding or something like that, there are performance tires that uh, do well in the rain, and that's something you'd have to look up depending on what you want to do. These front tires are harder because Can-Am, being the geniuses that they are, made this a 145-60-16 T-rated tire. So, if you're not familiar with T-ratings or this, first of all, this size doesn't exist anywhere. I cannot find a tire in that size. Some spare tires are in that size, but you don't want a spare tire on this. So, that T rating uh, limits these to about 120 miles an hour. And I'm not sure they, if they even put the temperature ratings on these at all. I know car tires do. Like, legit car tires, but... Three-ply, nope. For special MC use only, yeah. So they're not putting, you know, the temp ratings or tread ratings or anything like that on here. Oh, I'm going to take you guys with me. Nope, I don't see any of that stuff. So, yeah, I mean, temp ratings, uh, tread wear ratings, and all, all that stuff is something that you got to think of for tires. So, going less than 120 miles an hour, fine. If you're going to, you know, take this to a track or a dragway and you want to go, you know, you change the rear gear out and you want to go like 130, 140, 150, these front tires got to go. The other biggest complaint, even in the form that it's in now, are these puny little brakes. These brakes, again, for the 600 and a stock 900, they're okay. These are single piston <laughs> brakes. And um, the rotor, fine. But there's not enough power in these calipers in this braking system to really stop this. I, I've tried. I've not been able to get the ABS to kick in. And it just... It just kind of cruises very slowly to a stop. It's not um, not ideal at all. So I definitely think a braking system, better calipers or, or a big brake system or something like that is needed if you're putting that much power to the ground. Um, the other thing is room. It would go here. There's a stock header, the turbo manifold and all that would bolt here. Your intake would still be here. The piping would just be routed a little bit differently. And um, yeah, plenty of room. Again, Silver Turbos has a turbo kit that fits there. Um, they're oil cooled. Uh, the Turbo Ace 900 is oil cooled. The Turbo R is not is air cooled. So there's a separate intercooler that comes off of that. You'd have to figure that out. Uh, there's some little bit of room in the front. So again, that takes some R and D. You'd have to try to figure out where we're going to put an intercooler. You could probably side mount it or figure something out. So. Again, they have all the piping and everything. These go on snowmobiles, but so they have the parts. You just got to get it to work for the Riker. So, flock, that's it. Just want kind of want to go over that. And yeah, I think Can Am's really, really missing the mark on this. Especially since, again, I'm not the only one saying it. We've said it on the forums, Facebook groups. They literally have the engine sitting there in their snowmobiles. I think they even have a turbo jet ski. Like, you literally have the parts, you have the things to make this work, and you just don't. It's sad that you've got a segment of the market that's literally, oh no. Woohoo! <laughs> bumps, bumpity bumps. You have a segment of your entire market begging and screaming for something like uh, it's weird and I've said this I said this on the forums and the rideout group and a bunch of people agreed with me another company like Kawasaki or Honda or even Yamaha is gonna come along they're going to build a reverse trike with a big motor imagine if Kawasaki made an H2 reverse trike imagine that and it was like whatever it was priced at you know, I don't know what the H... I forget what the H2s go for, but... Imagine if it goes for H2 money, even. Which I'm, I'm assuming that it would. That would be crazy. And I would literally sell this Riker and buy one. Like, I'm sorry, can I love the Riker. <laughs> I love the Riker. And it's a lot of fun, but... Again, if any one of those companies came out with a big... Big motor. A forced induction. Trike. Reverse trike. I would buy it, and I actually know two people right off the top of my head that would buy it. And again, that segment that's been screaming on Facebook and the Spider Lovers forums would buy it too. So, 
I don't know, trying to make you guys money, but you don't want to listen to me. All right, that's it. <laughs> no more ranting, so go down there, do all the fun YouTube stuff, do the like, new subscribing. The commenting, feel free to comment. Now, we can have a civilized discussion. And um, check out my description. Again, BLR Tuning, Ironside Customs, Moby Kit Rescue, selling some hats for 20 bucks. All the money from the Kofi page and the sales from the hats goes to Moby Kit Rescue so we can rescue the kittens for the end of the year. I'll um, give them a check for the money and I will match uh, whatever we make on that. With all that being said, thank you for rocking with the flock. I'll see you guys on the next video.